All right, guys, we are back here with Captain Ron Kelly. Third video of this series. Today, we're going to talk about side imaging. Very important, useful tool that you're going to be able to use out on the water. Captain Ron's going to tell us how he sets his up. Let's do it. All right, guys, so side imaging is probably one of the most important tools that we have on our boats, and I think a lot of anglers don't truly understand it, and that's why they don't utilize it. So I want to go into a little bit more detail about kind of how it operates. So essentially what you have is you have your DI, your down imaging, which is shooting the super strong ping, and it's shooting it out to the side. So I like to explain this to anglers. Transducers in the back of the boat. Pretend like you have a 80-foot beam going out that side of the boat and an 80 foot beam going out that side of the boat. We're shooting out 80 on left, we're shooting out 80 on right. And that, that beam's going out this way and that beam's going out this way, 80 feet on each way. So as we drive, we're steering and we're turning these, these beams that have cameras on. And those cameras are looking down and they're drawing us a flat picture across the screen. And it's going to show us everything across the, the bottom of the lake and everything elevated off the bottom of the lake. So what it's actually going to do when it, when it regurg or when it relays this information here, the ping's going to go out, just like when we talked about coming from the satellite down, this ping's going to go out. So depending on the frequency, you got 455, 800, and you have Omega, it depends on how far and how strong it goes out. So 455 is going to look like this. That ping's going to go out both sides and fall off. 800 is going to go out a little bit further and then fall off. And then a megahertz is going to go way out and then fall off. So a lot of anglers will tell you you need to drop frequency in deeper water. And that's because their thought is that 455 is going to be a little bit slower. It's going to drag a little bit more. It's going to pick up a whole lot more detail in that image versus going up to a megahertz, which is shooting so hard and so far, it's getting some information, but maybe not all the detail. The one thing that I'll tell you, I'm an East Texas angler, and I typically run my side imaging on mega, and a lot of times I feel like I'm picking up most of the information. One thing I want to tell you guys to do is at your home body of water, experiment with that. Change frequencies. When you go into sonar, it's going to give you all the frequencies right here in the SI Chirp display frequency. You can start at 455 and go to 800 and go to mega. And you're going to have different images on all three of those based on the strength of that ping, that ping going out, picking up more information because it's slower, or that ping going out and getting a more detailed, more crisp image because it's sharper and it's faster. As far as settings go, when I come in here and I'm looking at sensitivity, contrast, sharpness, range, speed, and contrast. So let's, let's start here with sensitivity. Sensitivity is brightness, contrast is darkness. Typically, I'm gonna have my sensitivity up around nine or 10, somewhere around there, and then I'm gonna bring that contrast a little bit lower. Now, sharpness is essentially the same as the TV. You're just making the, the corners of your pixelations on this image a little bit sharper, gives you a little bit clearer image. Range, range is gonna depend on you. How deep you are, how good the image looks, I typically graph at 80 feet out to 100 feet out, typically 80. Now, if I get real shallow, I may only go out 40 or 50 feet. But if I'm in normal in that 10 to 20 foot of water, 30 foot of water, I'm shooting out 80 feet. Just like on the other technologies, we're going to keep that chart speed right in the middle at 5. And then this last little deal right here, this side imaging dynamic contrast, when you buy a Humbird unit, that's on. I'm going to typically turn that off. All that is is kind of an ultra darkness out there, and it's going to brighten that screen up. One thing I'm going to show you guys in this next little clip is I'm going to start moving this boat. And we're actually going to start graphing, and we're looking out across the surf, the bottom of the lake. We're looking out across the bottom of the lake, and we're going to start noticing right here. If, I don't know if you can zoom in on that or not, but you're going to see a little bright spot in the shadow. We're going to start moving and talk a little bit more in detail about that. Hey guys, so one thing that I want to add to what Captain Ron said, and it helped me years ago when I learned this, when I first was learning about side imaging, is this little area right here that's real dark. That is the water column underneath the boat. So many times, myself included, you think that is part of the distance between you and wherever you're casting. So if this is 10 foot out, you're thinking, oh, I gotta get 10 foot out. Well, no, that is the water column underneath. One thing Humminbird has allowed you to do, which I don't utilize, but you can if you want, is this SI contour mode. You can turn that on and that gets rid of that water column. So no longer do you have to guess how far out to see where the bottom is, it's there. So if that fish shows up right there, you know it's literally two or three foot off of the side of the boat. So it's something that you may wanna 
work with, you know, if you're beginning on this still, but it helped me out a lot learning that that is the water column that is not part of the bottom. All right, so we're coming down a little high spot right here. You see it's blurry because that's where I started. At. As I'm coming down, you're going to notice bright spots with dark shadows under them. Okay, so what's happening is this ping's going by and it's picking up that fish. Now what's happening on this is it's telling the pallet to turn the lights off right there and create a shadow. That's going to show you separation between the fish and the bottom. When you see separation between the fish and the bottom, 100% for certainty that has to be a fish. There's no other way something can be off the bottom. Now, the tricky part is distinguishing fish and rocks. And one thing I'll tell you is rocks will never have a long shadow. They'll always have a shadow that's relative to the size of the bright spot and it'll always be connected. You can see here just a few fish. I'm shooting out 80 tons of bait. I'm on a hard bottom, lots of rock, lots of gravel, and there's still fish all in this area. And this is the water column like Brian was explaining. You're seeing bait all in here. All this fuzzy stuff's bait. Now I'll come over here, we can scroll around right here. Move that cursor over with the arrow pad, and once you get on something, you can hit the plus and the minus sign to zoom in. You'll notice there's a little ring right here. And those are gonna be some small tires on the bottom there. So side imaging is one of the absolute best technologies out there. there there's not a, a lot of ways where you can cover as much water and get as much information off the bottom of the lake showing fish and cover and contour changes. Side imaging is probably the most important tool that I use as a fishing guide, especially in the summer, but don't underutilize it in the winter or in the cold months because especially in that, that super shallow water on mega imaging, you're gonna see details like you've never imagined. All right guys, so as you can see, a lot of stuff going on there with side imaging. Glad we were able to cover this with you with Captain Ron Kelly. For the next video, we're gonna jump in the new boat and check out some cool things like Mega Live, Target Lock, 360, some of my favorite tools to use on the water when I'm on the front deck. If you haven't checked out the previous videos, check those out now. Otherwise, please like, subscribe, comment, let us know what else you're looking for. Maybe we can get that done for you. See you guys next time.